it's time to get annotating. So as an annotator on Rebrick AI, you will likely be expected to annotate and or attribute anywhere from one to three different types of things. The most typical and probably most obvious one are the annotations themselves. And you'll see the annotations listed in the left-hand menu here, along with t uh, simple descriptions, their type, and HTML tooltips that your admins can optionally leave for you. These could include anything from instructions, links, reference images, but you may not see these in every project. In order to create an object label on Redbrick AI, all you have to do is choose the one that you'd like to create and either use the numeric hotkey that we list in the left-hand toolbar here, or click on the plus side. After clicking on the plus sign, you'll see that because the glioma is a segmentation specifically, our segmentation toolkit has appeared at the top of the screen. I highly recommend playing around with this toolkit, as well as making use of the tutorial videos that we have for each segmentation tool, as figuring out the magic combination of tools that works best for you in your flow and your structures is really the secret to saving lots of time and avoiding a lot of hassle on the platform. The Redbrick AI segmentation toolkit has a wide variety of manual and semi-automated tools. But let's start with a manual contour just to do a comparison here so that we can see what this looks like live. I'm going to choose a Glioma contour tool, and let's say that I want to do this structure here on my T1 contrast enhanced scan. I'm going to hold control and scroll. I'm also going to, oops, that's maybe a bit too much scrolling. I'm also going to use shift, left click drag to pan. And now what I'm going to do is manually contour this structure. All right, I've created a manual contour and I did an okay job, but that took you know probably about 30 seconds of me doing a poor job. So what I can do at this point is rasterize this contour or use by clicking this button or using the keyboard shortcut. And you'll see that my segmentation mask is applied. If I want to do 100% manual segmentation, I could go up one slice uh, and just continue this flow until the end of time. However, the power of Redbrick lies in leveraging these semi-automated and manual tools that we have to get highly accurate annotations done quickly. So what do I mean by that? If you've watched the contour tool tutorial, or you've maybe read our documentation, you'll know that the contour tool has several useful features. So let's talk about one of them right now. The smart contour feature uh, will do its best to detect a contour by itself without your help really. And all I need to do is to hold in control and option or Alt if you're on a Windows machine, and you'll see that the contour tool is doing its best to find a contour all on its own. I will, well, you know, let's assume that I'm happy with this contour. I will left click and then drag to smooth it. You'll see, there we go, getting some better smoothing done. And when I'm happy, I'll release everything. So once again, I could do this contour on slice 79 and then just continue on my merry way going one slice at a time However, the contour tool has interpolation. So what I'm going to do instead is go up one, two, three, four, five slices by using the arrow keys on my keyboard. I could have also pressed here and I'll do the exact same thing. I have now a contour on slice 84 and I have a contour on slice 79. The contour tool has linear pixel interpolation supported inherently. So you'll see that it's done its best to interpolate across the range. And what I'll do right now is rasterize and apply the segmentation mask so that the annotation is done. There might be some places where you're seeing a little bit of extra black and it's very easy to come in using either the brush, perhaps the adaptive brush or the pen tool even, and do just a very light touch up, left click to paint, right click to erase in order to make sure that these annotations look exactly as you want them to, all the way down to the pixel level. If you've watched uh, our previous tutorial video, you know that you can turn on and off pixel interpolation if you really want to do pixel by pixel editing. And I highly recommend doing a little bit of experimenting to figure out what combination of tools work best for you. One of the other things that your admin might ask you to do is also make certain types of decisions based on the series that you're looking at or the study. In this case, we do have a series classification, so let's give a click and see what we have. Our admin seems to have asked us to make a determination of scan quality for each of the series available to us. We're working on the T1 contrast enhanced scan, and I'll click space to reset my views, and I've been asked to make a determination of scan quality. So what I'm going to do here is just open this menu, 
And let's say this is an excellent scan. And I'm pretty happy about that. And now that data point will be available to our AI team or a data science team upon export. You'll see that after I made my choice, that number is reflected next to series classification to indicate that I have indeed created one attribute. And we also have a study classification. Let's pop this open real quick. Ah, white matter hyperintensities. This one's slightly different, but I can choose from a variety of options here. Let's say that I found instance of, a, of an uh, ischemia. All I have to do is once again, click this field and you'll see that data point is reflected in the study classification itself. This has been a basic overview of ways that you can label on Redbrick. We'll get into more advanced configurations and advanced tips and tricks in future tutorials.